Today we'll be flying on the world's oldest lasting airline that's still around on one of their flagship airplanes, the 777. Hop on board the KLM 777-300 in the business class cabin as we head today from Amsterdam Schiphol Airport down to Dubai International Airport. Welcome to Amsterdam Schiphol Airport here on this wonderful foggy afternoon. We're going to hop on board this plane down to Dubai. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar, KLM is the oldest airline that's still standing in the world. KLM standing for a long Dutch phrase that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, but the literal translation is of Royal Air Company. Now Amsterdam is KLM's biggest hub and KLM is Amsterdam's biggest carrier. And so as such, KLM does take up basically about half of the check-in area and they have a wonderful space here for you to get yourself all settled in no matter what cabin you are traveling in. Now this flight taking place around Christmas time meant that Schiphol Airport was fully decked out in the holiday decorations, which made this beautiful KLM check-in area just a little bit better. I always love the Christmas decorations and I think Schiphol did a wonderful job of them as you'll see more of. Over here to the right side, you'll see the Sky Priority check-in area, which is where we're going to be heading to go check in for our business class cabin. Now I should mention this business class ticket today I paid for with 45,000 Delta Sky Miles. The close relations between Air France, KLM, and Delta makes for a pretty seamless redemption if you're using any of the miles from those companies. Now coming out of the Sky Priority check-in, you'll notice a sign here for Priority to Gates. You'll notice that there's a security that most people are passing through, but if you are coming out of the Sky Priority check-in area, there's a separate escalator that takes you up to security. It's actually the same security, you just have your own dedicated line for you. The security area here at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport is actually pretty light and airy, which is very unlike a lot of the TSA checkpoints you'll find in the US, or security checkpoints you'll find elsewhere in Europe, where it's pretty dark and dingy and feels more like a prison type setting than it does an airport. The whiteness and openness of this actually gave me some form of IKEA vibes. Now I know IKEA is Swedish, but the same kind of vibes were coming off of this. Now a look just past security and passport control at some more of the holiday decorations at the main lounging area here in Schiphol Airport. Fully decked out in this Christmas decor with lights and wreaths and all kinds of stuff like that, including their number one attraction here in the main gathering area, the clock. Now the famous clock here in the main atrium at Schiphol Airport is actually meant to pay homage to an old Dutch artist. And it shows a working man in blue overalls every minute, erasing the current hand and painting a new minute hand on the clock. And being that it is one of the main attractions here at the airport, while people, including myself, were deciding if they wanted to go eat down there in the main atrium, a lot of us just kind of sat around and watched time pass on this mesmerizing clock. Now look at a few things that are actually down in that main atrium. A lot of them are just shops, there is some good restaurants down there, but regardless we actually have to head down there in order to get off to the gate. So we're going to head down the escalator, down into that atrium, and off towards our gate. Now Schiphol Airport has consistently ranked in the top 5 as far as the busiest airports in Europe go. But as far as land size go, it's not massive overwhelmingly considering some of the other airports you find as far as Heathrow and Charles de Gaulle that you'll find throughout Europe. Even still, there is no shortage of things to keep you occupied on your time here at Schiphol Airport. I had a 4 hour layover and I easily could have spent double that even without my ticket to the premium cabin and the lounge. Off to my left here, what you can't necessarily see all explicitly is an airport library where you can go borrow books and there's all kinds of reading nooks for you to hang out and read those books including some quiet spaces. Off to the right of the people mover here is the Nemo area or the kids area which has some sort of jungle gym type of stuff like that to get all the kids energy out before they get on these flights considering that Schiphol Airport does have some fairly long flights especially on KLM. Just past that is this store here that has all kinds of fantastic plates, bowls, vases of all kinds of different designs. Some of these actually will show up again once we're actually on board in the business class cabin of KLM, which is a fantastic touch to see and ideally you'll see that plating that they give us once we get on board. One of the things that's connected to this that's actually fantastic is a art museum. The Reichsmuseum, as I believe it's pronounced, 
is a popular art museum in Amsterdam and they have a Schiphol wing of it here within the airport with a small sample size of some of the art pieces that you could expect to see. Now museums and airports still isn't all that common but they are on the rise. There are still more and more airports each year that are installing some sort of museums, especially something like a Rijksmuseum that has a sample of a big museum that you'd find in the city that that airport represents. Let me know if you know of any good airport museums that are at your airport or an airport that you've flown through in the past. I love this new focus on the passenger experience, specifically free passenger experiences, especially for those passengers traveling in economy that might just need to kill some time between flights. Lounge time. Now for one of the favorite lounges that I'm convinced I've ever been in, the KLM Royal Crown Lounge here in Schiphol Airport. Now if you've watched KLM videos in the past, then you're familiar with these little Dutch houses. They're a theme that runs throughout the entire airline. They seem to be very proud of them, and I'll show you just how they come back later on. At the top of the escalator is a central check-in desk, and around that is the entire club that kind of goes in both directions, up, down, left, and right. So we're going to go explore a little bit of what this lounge has to offer. First thing that you'll notice is that there is no shortage of seating areas and each seating area is a little bit different and has a little bit different feel. There's plenty of comfortable areas for solo travelers, for couples, for large groups, for people that want to eat, for people that want to work, for people that want to study. Whatever you want to do, there is a place for you. Off to the side of the lounge here is check-in desks for those of you that want to book maybe a sleeping pod or a shower or something like that. Unfortunately, they do book up fairly quickly and I was not able to get a shower reservation for myself in time before boarding started for my flight. So if you are looking to do a shower or sleep session here at the lounge, I recommend getting that booked early. Now there's a number of places to eat in this lounge. Here you're seeing one of the first of the buffet areas. This is over by the spa area, which is to the left when you enter the lounge. Walking down this hallway, you can see a large number of seating, kind of like I was talking about. Spaces for everybody to kind of hang out depending on what kind of vibe you're looking for while you're in the lounge. And then we get to our second buffet, which is on the opposite end of the lounge, on the base floor, which has similar food options and more and more seating areas. Then we climb up this wonderful multi-tiered seating area, which is meant to take you up to the upper deck, but it's just a little bit more exciting than just your normal stairs or your escalator, and it also allows for some seating. Up top is what they call blue, and it represents some of their more fine dining options that they have here. You can see some more of that blue and white tile that will never really go away on this flight. The main KLM logo, a history of the KLM plating and stuff that they have used, and just past that, you can see the actual formal blue restaurant, one of two in this upper level. Upstairs is also an outdoor terrace, which unfortunately was closed today. I'm assuming it's because it was basically freezing outside. That being said, that was one of the main ways to get over to that blue restaurant from this stairwell. And so rather than checking it out from here, I actually went down to check the other way to get upstairs and we were able to check out the restaurant from there. Back downstairs, you can see all the Dutch style houses with the escalators coming up in front of us. Those escalators are actually going from the main floor of the lounge up to the upper restaurant. So they actually have multiple of those escalators. You can see the sign here for the blue bar and the blue restaurant. So we're going to head up this escalator and check out what that blue bar has to offer. And with some of the coolest tables that I may have ever seen, here is the blue bar in the upper level of the KLM Royal Crown Lounge. It has plenty of options as far as seating goes, the drinks look fantastic, and while I didn't have time to enjoy them today, I would love to explore them in the future. 
If you look up on the ceiling, you'll notice these light switch at the end as a bunch of different KLM destinations. So I wasted probably a good 10 minutes walking around looking at all the options, trying to find my home city of San Francisco, which I could not find unfortunately. Opposite of the blue bar, up on the other side of the escalator is the blue restaurant, which is KLM Royal Crown Lounge's fine dining experience, which was unfortunately closed this time of day, however I don't know if I would have gone for it anyway. However, it does sound like when it's open, it does fill up fairly quickly. Anyway, after exploring the lounge and hanging out for a little bit, it looked like our flight was getting ready to depart, so looking at the big board we figured out where we had to head off to, and headed out to our flight to Dubai. And just to repeat what I said earlier, even walking through the main corridors of the airport, there is still plenty of things to do. All these kinds of small art exhibits like this one here off the right, even if you don't go into the lounge and you don't have that wonderful experience, there is still some fantastic activities to keep you busy. And with that, we arrived here at our gate heading off to Dubai on our 777-300, this one coming in the KLM Asia livery, which if you don't know the story behind that one, you can look it up, but essentially it boils down to them being able to fly to Taiwan. Now at our gate E19 here, they told Sky Priority passengers to go ahead and line up and they would be beginning boarding soon. However, it turns out that they needed visa checks and for one reason or another, they were not prepared for these visa checks. And so while people were lining up, there was another line building for them just to check everyone's visas and passport documents to make sure everyone was okay to go. All in all, this was a super lengthy process that continued even after I got on board. Not the worst thing in the world for me. As I've said before on this channel, the 777-300 is by far my favorite airplane to look at. It's just a fantastic airplane and the engines are absolutely incredible. And so I took the time to enjoy the views and enjoy these planes appearing and disappearing into the fog in the background. And finally, after those that required pre-boarding were on the plane, they called for the Sky Priority passengers, and so I hopped on board with my Zone 1 passengers. Now I know it's a small thing, but Schiphol Airport's got a strange gate design. You can see here, walking down this tunnel with the round windows, it almost looked like I was walking through a boat looking through porthole type windows of some sort. Then we branched off and headed to the left side towards the first and business class cabins, or just business class I should say I guess on this flight, and that one looked like we were walking through some sort of tunnel to get on board some sort of spaceship. The other thing about Schiphol Airport jet bridges is I know that at one point at least they had the only functioning over wing jet bridges at the end of the E-gates. I wasn't able to check those out today, but let me know in the comments if those over wing jet bridges are still standing, and more importantly if they're still used. Now my camera was having a problem with this next clip, so I'll slow it down for you, but KLM's business class cabin is actually separated into two cabins. The front cabin here having five rows and a two, two, two setup. And just behind that, where we're gonna be sitting today, is a one row business class cabin, also in a two, two, two setup. So we're gonna be in seat 6A, which is in this private cabin, which has some positives and negatives. They did have people walking past while boarding and so it was very busy for that period, but once the boarding door was shut, boy was this space private. You can see here just by panning around once the majority of the passengers were on board, we didn't even have the curtains closed because we were still on the ground, but you can see just how private of a field this cabin really had. Now to take a little bit of a look at the seat. First off, in front of us, storage was actually not too bad in this seat, although some of it was in a strange place. I always appreciate the under footrest storage so I can stash my backpack there rather than having to put it up top since that's usually the only good place for it. To the right side, you'll see this countertop which isn't huge, but it's big enough to store something small along with your drink. Behind that is your seat controls which are admittedly very limited, but there's plenty at least for this flight I guess. Armrest behind that and the very limited privacy divider, I did find privacy to be a slight issue on this flight. In your literature pocket, you've of course got the KLM branded bar uh, barf bag, you've got the safety card and the Holland Herald magazine, which I did actually have some good stuff to read through in the air that I found in that magazine. 
Next to that is your Seatback TV remote, and I always love when the remotes have this touchscreen feature because it serves as a separate screen in a way. So you don't have to reach all the way out to your screen. If you've watched my Avianca video, you know just how much I like this type of remote. Now look at just kind of through the things they have here. Obviously they have plenty of English selection considering how many US and English speaking destinations they fly to, all of which can be controlled right here on the handset. And you'll see a little bit of that as I scroll through and show you, but some of the other features you have on here include audio, games, and a map that you can pull up on your handset even while you're watching something on the TV. One of the drawbacks I found on the remote is that this large menu that you see on the TV, which has plenty of space up there, is directly translated to the remote. And having to hit the different items on here was kind of tough and it's pretty easy to fat finger it and hit the wrong thing. Now these armrest tray tables make me nervous sometimes because I usually am afraid they're going to be kind of flimsy. This one was actually pretty sturdy and that made me pretty happy so I could do all kinds of work with my laptop and not have to worry about it getting all floppy on me. But you can see it comes out of the armrest and you can either have it pulled out halfway or unfold it all the way like we did for meals. Now take a look at my footrest you'll see here. First off, obviously I had plenty of leg room, but if you look over to the aisle seat, it was much bigger, almost double the size of my footrest. I will say I never had any problems with the length of my footrest, but it was something interesting that I noticed. Now as far as other storage in your seat, in probably the least convenient place ever, you have charging ports, headset ports, and some more storage up over your left shoulder, along with a reading light that, if your seat's in the sitting position, is completely behind the seat. Now about 15 minutes after boarding, they came around with pre-departure beverages, and I opted today to go with the champagne option, as opposed to the water or the orange juice. Now KLM's love of the little Dutch houses comes back once more in their bathroom with the wallpaper having the same Dutch houses. Interestingly enough, this wallpaper was not used in the economy bathrooms. And so if you're traveling in economy, you're just going to have the basic white bathroom that you're used to seeing on pretty much all airplanes at this point. Now I remember that visa problem I was talking about before we boarded where people had to get all their documents checked. Turns out that became a bigger issue than we thought. This is after an hour after being on board and we still hadn't even closed the boarding door and the captain just kept coming on board and telling us whatever he could, unfortunately still limited information. We ended up sitting in our seats for just under two hours before we actually pushed back. Once I realized how long we'd be sitting here, I took a second to look around the seat at the other amenities we were given, including this bottle of water, which I always love on these long haul flights considering I get very thirsty. These noise canceling KLM headphones, which were actually very comfortable and I was able to not only listen to TV with, but I was able to sleep with them on my head without any discomfort. In addition to that was the wonderful KLM amenity kit, and I just love the bag they used. It's got a magnet cover, and behind that magnet cover is a zipper to open up that pouch, and once you get it open, it's got the KLM socks and eye mask and earplugs that you usually get, toothbrush, toothpaste. The face moisturizer and lip balm they gave us were absolutely fantastic, and I always love the KLM branded pens. Then they came around and handed out menus, and my first impression was these menus are insanely nice. And I was really excited to look through them. Then I flipped them over and realized these menus are just for this flight. It's got this exact flight number, this exact route, and even this exact date which meant that if I wanted to, I could keep this menu, bring it home as a little souvenir from the flight because it's not like they were going to reuse it. Now, if you don't care about the menus, use the timestamps below. Go ahead and skip ahead to the next section. But for those of you that want to stick around, first thing we're going to be looking at is the wine menu here, which opens up to just the general story of the wine and where it comes from. Once you get past that, there's a list of their white wines, or basically I should say there are two choices of white wines, and then there are three choices of red wines. All in all, the wines look fantastic. I didn't actually have any, but the guy next to me had quite a few glasses, and from what I got from him, they were pretty good. Now looking through the food menu that we have for this flight, same thing when you open it up, the first thing you're going to get is a welcome story from the chefs and the people who created the menu for this flight. Next page is where I found the food, 
and I was immediately stressing to find it all in Dutch. Fortunately, if you flip one more page after that, it has the exact same thing, but this time in English. So you can see the different options here. I ended up going with the chicken option, which was absolutely fantastic. And as far as meat goes on planes, you can't really ask for much more. So stay tuned for more on that later on. After that, you're going to find the non-wine drinks, so the cocktails, the champagne, the different alcoholic beverages and spirits, as well as the soft drinks, coffees, teas, all kinds of stuff like that. Now, if you're looking at this shot and thinking, hmm, weird, this camera angle is kind of awkward, it doesn't really look like it was filmed very well, that's because it wasn't. And that's because my phone was plugged in over my left shoulder, all the way tucked in the back. Pretty hard to get any good angles of your camera footage around the cabin when your phone's plugged in about a mile behind you. After watching every episode of The Good Place that KLM had, it was apparent we weren't pushing back anytime soon, so the flight attendants came by to offer us another beverage option, this time hot beverages of coffee or tea. I jumped on the coffee option with sugar and creamer, and little by little, those extra passengers continued to trickle in as they got their documents checked. Finally, they all got checked. Unfortunately, there was multiple passengers that had to be left behind, which caused an even greater delay as they had to then go on to the baggage hold and pull off all of those people's bags. Now as we push back, I am gonna give us just a minute of silence in this video to appreciate the startup of this fantastic GE90 engine. Then came the KLM safety video, and you remember that blue and white tile? Well, it's back here in the safety video as everything was artistically drawn on these tiles to continue to portray the safety video. Whether you love it or whether you hate it, can't hate them for being consistent at least.
Once we got in the air, it was time for me to connect to KLM's onboard Wi-Fi. They actually had a few different options, including a free messaging option. They had an hourly browsing option. And then they had full flight for both browsing and for streaming, and you could choose basically whichever strength you wanted. I chose the streaming one, and it was plenty fast enough. In addition, they give you a map here of your flight so you can see if there's any forecasted outage areas so that you're not left freaking out when all of a sudden the Wi-Fi clicks off after you've paid good money for it. Shortly after that, they came around with the hot towels, scented of course, which we have to love and appreciate, and that meant meal service was on the way. First things first was cheese. It came with cheese and nuts. Unfortunately, I could not get both because apparently they did not have enough, so I went with the cheese option, which was absolutely fantastic, and a Sprite to start my meal. Well, after the cheese starter, it actually took them quite a while for us to actually get the next portion of our meal. And so in the meantime, I sat back, I watched the sun set, I watched the bright orange moon come up into the sky as I sat back and stayed comfortable and patient. And then came what I'm going to front as the most beautiful setting I've ever seen as far as a meal on an airplane goes, starting with this tablecloth. You can see the attention to detail carried throughout this tablecloth. I should have known what was in store for me to come. Now I have to say the plating absolutely gets a 10 out of 10 from KLM here, but the food may be an 11 out of 10. Everything about this was fantastic. The smoked beef was cooked perfectly on point, along with the plating that it came in, the beautiful bowl and the placemat. Behind that was a nice kimchi and a nice rice salad, which was absolutely amazing. And to top all of that off, just to make things even a little bit better, if you look just past that, at the salt and pepper shakers, they're little plastic clogs. Absolutely fantastic as far as touches go, and just when I thought it couldn't get even better, I unwrapped my silverware and check out the detail on this fork, spoon, and knife. I wanted to bring it all home with me. It was absolutely fantastic. And while maybe not as beautiful, the entree dish was absolutely fantastic and the best cooked chicken I have ever had on an airplane, especially considering that I'm usually pretty skeptical when I get meat that isn't fish on board an airplane. And lastly was the dessert. They had either a cheese plate or the sweets plate. I of course went with the sweets plate. And the little pastries that it came with were absolutely fantastic. They all had different flavors and they all had different textures, more importantly. So it was a great way to end the meal. And along with that, I got a coffee with cream and sugar, stirred that up, and once again, guys, check out the detail on even the coffee stirrer that they gave us. The same thing on the silverware, it was absolutely beautiful, and I loved every second of it. And right before bed, they came around with these little Dutch house chocolates. Unfortunately, they only had milk chocolate. They previously had dark and white before they got to row six. I guess a drawback of being all the way back here. But then it was time to set up the bed. Admittedly, I did not sleep on this flight just because of the timing, but I did absolutely get plenty comfortable. The seat was absolutely fantastic. The only weird thing is that you see the seat didn't actually reach the footrest. But the fact that they gave us a real pillow, not the cheap little pillows that some airlines give out nowadays, and the comforter wasn't thick, but it did plenty for the job that I needed. The galley here between the front and aft sections of business class is a nice place to come hang out and stretch out. They had little snacks here throughout the flight and one of the three restrooms for business class was located in this galley. Here in front you can see the 222 setup of the business class cabin. This is actually the outdated version. One of the flight attendants was telling me about the Dreamliner in the 121 configuration so I'll have to try that out with KLM again soon. If for nothing else, I need to do more meals with KLM with that plating and food quality, but the added bonus of that fantastic lounge as well. So who knows, I guess they posted for a KLM 787 video coming up in the next year. Now once the sun set, there really wasn't a whole lot to see. What you're seeing here is just a grouping of large villages scattered throughout the country of Iran. And so I took in the sights that I could while I enjoyed the last little bit of this wonderful flight. 
Got some work done, and in the meantime, they came by with one last snack before we landed. This was basically a little sandwich with some sort of sausage inside and mustard to go along with it. They had that or vegetarian option of that as well. And I went with one last glass of water while I settled in for the last 45 minutes of this flight. Now I know a lot of you guys have probably heard about it already, but KLM also hounds out these little Dutch houses before landing on every business class cabin in every flight. I was given house number 69 here and each one of these is filled with Dutch gin. Now they do have a fantastic collection and there's a lot to get and so you might think it could be tough to keep track of them if you are a frequent KLM traveler, however they have thought of that and they've actually created an app to keep everybody up to date with what houses are out and which ones you have in stock. Here's a glimpse into that app. You can see it has all the different houses listed and you can click on them and actually get a story behind each and every one of them and where they are within the Netherlands. I decided to log this house, house number 69, into my log and took a picture and it didn't work. So instead I decided to select it from the list. I scrolled down the list, tapped on the one I had and added it to my collection. So now under my houses I have my one and only house and I am excited to add to it from there. And just about that time, the sprawling city lights of Dubai came into view just after midnight. I got what I could at the left side of the airplane. It seemed like the majority of downtown was off the right side, unfortunately. But it was still impressive to see this sea of lights, especially after seeing essentially no lights, basically since we took off from Amsterdam. We taxi into our gate here, a lot of you guys may be familiar with Dubai's Terminal 3, which is where Emirates lives, but they do have three terminals. Terminal 1 is where we're heading today, it's going to be basically every airline that operates internationally that is not Emirates. Terminal 3 is all of the Emirates airplanes, they have multiple buildings and you can see those off our left side here as we taxi. And Terminal 2, being the odd man out, is actually on the other side of the airport and that's going to be where airlines like Fly Dubai operate out of mostly. So stay posted because I do have a video coming out with Fly Dubai and if you haven't seen that and it's already been posted then go ahead and check that out on flight number one as well as I have an upcoming video where I will be checking out their Lie Flat Max 8 product. So as far as Dubai Terminal 2 goes, there will be coverage on that coming up soon. Now I'll also have some good content about Terminal 3 coming up on this channel as well. First things first, Emirates flight number one on the A380 premium economy product, which I'm super excited for considering it's still fairly new. And in addition to that, I will be doing one of my number one bucket list items for the majority of my life, which is the Emirates A380 first class experience from Dubai to San Francisco. Even though there's a million videos out there already, I have to get the experience for myself and I might as well share it with you guys because I love taking you guys along on these journeys with me. Now KLM, what is the flight like? Where does it rank in comparison to the other flights that I've done and what I've seen on YouTube amongst business class cabins around the world? It's pretty darn high, I gotta say. From the moment you show up at the airport, especially if you're flying out of Schiphol Airport, they make you feel welcome, they make you feel like a priority, and luxury is absolutely at the top of their game. 
They have presentation nailed from the moment you get to the airport to the moment you leave the airport at your destination. The passenger experience was great. The crew was fantastic. And I have to think, even if you were in an economy class cabin, even though I didn't get a chance to look at the actual seats, the airport experience, especially at Schiphol, is absolutely fantastic. And I would imagine with the entertainment options that as long as it's not too, too long of a flight, you would very much enjoy your experience. But with that, we're gonna say goodbye to our business class seat here on this KLM 777, and we're gonna head out to immigration here at Dubai and enter the wonderful country of the UAE. Now the setup of Dubai's Terminal 1 is a little bit abnormal as far as what you might expect. When we get off the plane and out into the main parts of the terminal, you're going to see some of the normal stuff in terms of you'll see all the main gate waiting areas, and you'll see us getting funneled off to a different area for immigration checkpoints. The interesting thing, however, is that the check-in and immigration and baggage claim is actually in an entirely separate building. And so in order to get to that, we actually have to take this pathway over to basically an air train type of thing, take that over to immigration, and then we can head through customs and out into the terminal. This unfortunately means that if you do have a connecting flight, it is pretty cumbersome in order to make that connection. Luckily, you don't have to go all the way out to the main immigration checkpoint, but you do still have a very far walk, even for the connections counter to head back through. Luckily, at Dubai Airport, most of the connections are on Emirates and within the system of Emirates, and so if you're flying a non-Emirates international carrier, the chance of connection is significantly lower, although there is still plenty of connections. Now you may remember before departure I was talking about how long we waited at the gate for all those visas to be figured out before people could get on board the airplane and at the time it was kind of annoying however I was enjoying my business class seat and the extra beverages I got as a byproduct but boy did it pay off by the time we got to customs here in Dubai. Apparently this line can take up to an hour or more but at this time at about 1.30 in the morning it was more or less empty. Only took me about 10-15 minutes to get all the way through customs and pick up my check bag, which was a fantastic luxury from an airport of this size. Now the visa situation here is actually fairly easy and it's different obviously by country, but from traveling as a US citizen, you are granted a visa on arrival, meaning you don't have to apply for anything beforehand. And when you do show up, they also give you a free SIM card, so if you are needing to use your cell phone while you're there, it comes with one free gigabyte and you're able to get more with that SIM card while you're there in Dubai. Now we went out to baggage claim 6 and waited for the bag to arrive from the flight from Amsterdam. The other thing I will mention is that we had the priority tag on our bag because of the business class cabin. The bag was what took the longest. It did take actually about 20-30 minutes for us to actually get those bags at the carousel, which was a little bit surprising. Headed out to customs, scanned our bags through the normal checkpoint. And with that, we were out into Terminal 1 here at Dubai Airport. This is where you're going to be dumped out and you can see all the advertisements. Getting between the terminals was not easy. I actually had to make my way over to Terminal 2 for a connecting flight. And there is no metro that takes you between terminals, only between cities. And so I kind of walked aimlessly around the terminal before I eventually called an Uber and headed out. But with all that figured out, welcome to Dubai United Arab Emirates. Welcome to Dubai International Airport. I hope you enjoyed KLM's 777 business class product. I absolutely loved it and I cannot wait to go back out and try out the 787 product at a later date. But thank you for watching so, so much. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Peace.